this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Wake up. Time to die. Good morning, Angel. Good morning, Charlie. Yo, she bitch. Let's go. I'm on, Dad. You're so fast, too. Don't fuck with the babysitter. We came, we saw, we kicked it ass. Swing. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Bueller. You can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Oh, oh. What are you looking at, Spothead? Fucking Chuck Norris. Great Scott, my dog is heavy. You just gotta keep living, man. L I V I N. Cinema Royale. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Hello, and welcome to Cinema Royale, where movies get talked about every episode. And sorry if I couldn't think of a better tagline, but I'm hungover as hell. <laughs> so you're right, really. This episode uh, kind of features two less people. Uh, Morgan and Matt are not on this episode because Morgan's feeling kind of ill and Matt just <laughs> disappeared out of nowhere. Uh, this, by aliens. <laughs> this episode we have uh, James Sullivan, of course, also known as Jaime Tude. This episode is brought to you by drunken former roommates puking up peanut <laughs> butter and jelly sandwiches and pissing on laptops. <laughs> oh. And True story. <laughs> wow. 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 That's for another time. Wow. Since Morgan and Matt are not here on this episode, I have two new replacements as guests on this episode. Uh, first is obviously the British personality known as Sonic Guru, also known as Dan. Hello there. And his girlfriend, Star. Oh, I'm the tag along now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, she just got posed. Not my own thing. I'm Sonic Guru's girlfriend. <laughs> Good job, Mike. Good job. Wow. I feel the love, man. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Uh, not, not thank you for saving my ass. Not creator of the Silver Screen Newsroom. Not ex anime reviewer. No, I I get introduced as the girlfriend. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm hung over though. I can't think straight. <laughs> That's my uh, for this podcast. All right. I had a huge night last night. I was partying, having a good time at a rock concert. Ah. Uh, Friends don't let friends podcast hungover. Apparently. Shut up. <laughs> That's uh, going to be a knee card. So, those of you who listened to the last episode, the topic of this episode is sequels. Any kind of sequels. A sequel that's a direct sequel to the original movie, or it could be a midquel, a prequel, or whatever. It's still called a sequel. No, that's why they have different names. Ah. Mm-hmm. You know, honestly, honestly it depends, though, because you don't really exactly know if it's a sequel or not until you actually, like, oh, oh, so it's taken place before, even though it's got a number corresponding to it. Yeah. Like Saw 2, in other words. Hmm. Uh, you guys, aren't, are you guys familiar with the Saw series? Yes. Oh, I, I know only you partially partially are, only sir. I'd love to get him to watch him, but he has no interest, and he's not into uh, horror and gore and all that. And I'm trying to explain to him that the Saw series, at least the original trilogy, it, it doesn't turn into gore. It's not really gore. When you get into four or five, would they get up to six of them? Seven, I think. Seven. Yeah, there, there's more gore in the later ones, but honestly, I feel the first three aren't that bad. Especially compared to Hostel. Yeah. Oh my god. That's they had, one thing for about, me, they... Yeah. Hmm? I was going to say, it's one thing yeah. about... Se- yeah, I was going to say, 
that's one thing about sequels. It's supposed to, like, as soon as you get the first two sequels done, it's kind of like you're just milking the franchise just for the fans, really. Or just, oh, because we've raked in that much money, we can keep this thing going. Like, the Paranormal Activity series is up to its fourth film now, and I think they're making a fifth one. And I haven't even seen the first one. I had no intention of watching the first one. But uh, the the reason why I bring up the Saw series to begin with is because uh, um, they the interesting thing about uh, about the films for the first uh, for the first uh, three films, like Star said, is that they um, <clears throat> they they sort of wrap around each other in a very in a very interesting way that if you sit down and think about it it doesn't it 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 does kind of make sense you know you you kind of think because saw 2 is uh, is saw 2 then that must be a sequel to the events happening in the first film but it's not even though saw it, 3 even comes it, around in your life Wait, it, huh? it it even is but it, it isn't it's, oh, it's, it's an ascending number, but it's not ascending in, ascending in a story. Well, no. I mean, it's been a while since I've seen them, but I, I could have swore it did continue. It had nothing to do with Adam and the Doctor. True. But later on in the, in the film, you do kind of come back to Adam and what happened to him. And, and you are finding out and continuing from Jigsaw's life. So it, so it is continuing, technically. Mm-hmm. Someone else noticed that the main milk sequels are always horror movies? They bring in the most money, probably. Speaking of milk. Compared to mm-hmm. like <laughs> Oh yeah, you down that milk. You sure that milk who's boss. Uh, mm-hmm. sequels are just made, that sequel's being made just for the hell of it, just because, oh, it was popular then. Like, the fourth Parasitic Caribbean film movie, the Terminator Salvation, the Die Hard Five, uh-huh. and also um, Indiana Jones Four. Mm-hmm. You didn't need to do Indiana Jones Four. You had a strong trilogy, man. Why? P- fans wanted it. They he delivered. They hated I don't it. For it. I I'm I'm among the the. The uh, exceedingly few that uh, enjoyed the fourth one. Allow me to shake your hand. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, that's Andy and Jones for. Who wants to touch me? <laughs> <laughs> I said, who wants to touch me? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um... Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, let's see. Going going aside from aside from horror films that that milk sequels, uh, I believe that uh, I believe that before we uh, I believe that before we started this podcast, uh, uh, Star and I had a challenge. <laughs> oh, ha, yeah, I was just waiting for that to happen. Star, would you care to? Elaborate on this challenge. Well, without thinking about it, the first sequel that comes into my head that's a good sequel, surpassing its original uh, film, was T2, Terminator 2. And, I mean, it's, it's a cult classic at this point. I definitely think it's better than the first original Terminator film. And then James rebuttaled with... I'd like no, to I, rebu- you on I, that. I rebuttaled. I rebuttaled. With the Dark Knight, which uh, again surpasses it, surpasses its original one, and it's, out of the trilogy, it's still the best one. Yeah, but I feel that's only because Heath Ledger made the film. Don't get me wrong, good film, still a good film, but it was because of the performance that Heath Ledger gave as Joker, is what makes that film so fucking popular. Not because of his death. Even then, the um, Imaginary and the Doctor Parnassus came out later, with a film he also was making at the same time. Yeah, they covered and... that good actually. Yes, they patched it up pretty well. And what film would you say was a good sequel? 
Um, well, I'm going to say... I'm going to say that um, I did I did find uh, Terminator 2 to be a good sequel. However, it is not without its flaws. No movie is. There's no, no perfect... movie is. Oh, uh, there is a perfect film, all right. I will find it one day. Oh, okay. Let me know. Uh, okay. Uh, but... Um, the issue, the issue that I always had with uh, with Terminator Two, was uh, completely uh, defeating the purpose of the first of the first film. Meaning, and that was meaning the theme in the first film, or one of the many themes uh, present, was that uh, you couldn't really. Uh, you couldn't really avoid fate because here is the future coming back, uh, coming back to the past to face you, to put you on uh, on route for that uh, that uh, that future that's undoubtedly going to happen. And in Terminator Two, uh, what was the impression that they left you with? That you could change the future. I don't know if I walked away with that. Then, then Terminator Three came along and said, "You just delayed it. It's still going to happen." <laughs> then we got Salvation. Yes. I wanted the shit. See, I haven't seen T Four yet. No, wait, wait. Yep. Yeah, no, I haven't seen T Four yet. I've got it on my shelf. And, I haven't watched it yet. And that's why I say that even though T Two was a good movie, I'm I'm going to argue that T Three was a little bit better. No. I was bored with T3. Okay. It's been a while okay. since I've seen it, so I don't have a valid argument to that. I just remember not being impressed with it. I was just completely bored with it. Uh, a psychotic Kristana Loken wasn't your thing? I guess not, I don't know. I mean, props to her. I mean, every actor has always said it's difficult to, uh, you know, portray a character when you're not able to actually read any lines. And I don't believe that character said one word, really. But, um, yeah, no, it just it, it didn't do anything for me. I think she did. Did she say something? I think I think I'm trying to remember. It's been a while since I've seen it. I think it was when an officer came up to it and she was impersonating um, Victoria's Secret magazine. Yeah. See, but the ultimate question is, what makes a good sequel, though? Exactly. Does it build upon uh, the original, or does it uh, does it see? Uh, well, you should be. A, well, it, it sh well, you have to have an establishing franchise. You have to just like. Well, will you need is make make a film. You've got to. St well, obviously, you only make a film willy nilly anyway. So I don't know what I'm talking about. But um, it's got to be like a jumping off point. You have to establish establish in one film. You have to expand upon the other. Yeah, exactly. Like, like um, look at the comic movie Spider Man, for example, Sam Raimi's. Like you got established who Spider Man is in the first film and what he does. Then in, in Spider Man 2, it expands more on the mythos and introduces more characters. Then Spider Man 3 came along and kind of shot, shot it all over it. But that's besides the point. <laughs> yeah. I didn't hate Spider Man 3. I mean, I don't okay. think it's that bad, but it's just like it feels. <sighs> it's, just lo it's just looking and go. Uh... Okay, so it's not as strong as the first two. It's kind of the same way I feel about the Transformers films, except I prefer the first one and not two or three. Oh, two sucked. Two sucked royal. And royal! Michael Bay, blame, Michael Bay blames the strikes. I had enough after the first film. I, uh, with respect, with respect to Michael Bay, who was apparently very successful at, at what he does. It was... Explosions. Frosting. Boobs. A lot of frosting. 
Oh, I'm sorry, not boobs. T and A. There you go. Megan Fox. Mm-hmm. The first shot in the third movie was a girl's ass going upstairs. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, what makes a good sequel, or even in, in cases a good midquel, is where they is where they, they build upon the questions that, that you'll be asking at the end of the first film. Yeah. Like, uh, I... Uh, they, and not, and not, and not, uh, and not so much, not so, I was going to say, not so much living on a fucking cliffhanger. Yeah. Play right forward. Yeah, I, also, hate, I hate questions. Yeah, it's also seeing what people want to see. Like when I saw the end of Shrek, in Shrek Two, I wanted Shrek babies. I didn't get that till Shrek Three. <laughs> even then, even then, it was kind of a post sequel. Yeah. Well, because but I mean, I'm saying I don't like cliffhangers. Watching Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, and all of a sudden it just cuts the credits. I literally scream at the t- screen at the TV saying, "Fuck you, Jay Brokaw." I'm a, what the hell's going to happen next? And yes, I went to mm. see At World's End in the cinema just to find out what happens, and I was, was thinking, fight scenes are good, the story's kind of shit. I believe, um... Hmm? No, sorry. Scooter? Huh? Uh, were you about to say something, or...? No, I was just thinking of what to say. He just hosts the thing. He doesn't yeah. actually talk. He just sits there and introduces us. <laughs> Shut up! I'm just. I I, wa- <laughs> I I I wanted to say. Just don't really cue me when I say this, but there was one sequel that I grew up watching and I loved it so much. And the sequel that I watched the most was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2: The Secret of the Ooze. See, and with you on that one, I. That, that is a guilty I, pleasure sequel I, for me. I like that more than TMNT One. Don't get me wrong, Team NT1 was a good film, and Team yeah. NT2 just feels a lot more close to the TV show. Yeah. See, those films are guilty pleasures to me. I, I grew up with them as well, so, I mean, you know, everybody really... See, but the third one sucked. The third one was bad. Uh, third one was bad, but I just thought it was kind of cheesy, bad, that was kind of good in a way for me. Still a guilty pleasure. Yeah. Then you have TMNT. That was, a genius, or, that was it was a, it was a genius title, by the way. Yeah. That was. A, I, I enjoyed that, that one. With it. You you do remember how they tied in the other three films with it, right? Yeah, with subtle yes. hints. Yeah, with well, subtle hints like Shredder's helmet in the background. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't. It wasn't even that. It was the little trophy thing at the end of the film. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it was not a, a direct sequel or, or anything. No. But it was sort of, you know, it, in, this um, is something to follow up. Yeah. And in um, Turtles Forever, it showed the C- that the TMNT film and the other films as alternate realities. Yes. Indeed. So it is yes. questionable. Yeah. yeah. It's like a cop out. One of the. Uh greatest examples of sequel to a franchise would be the Die Hard franchise. Uh, they made enough. They, they made a lot of sequels. I mean, the first Die Hard, it's a great flick, and they're thinking, like, how is it going to be a sequel? And, of course, Die Hard 2, Die Harder, comes out, and... It's the same it's, movie. It's, it's got it's the same... It's essentially the same... It's, a, it's the same thing. It says, okay, terrorists... Uh, wife in trouble. McLean's got a Christmas day. time. Okay. Yeah, and, and Christmas time. Yeah. yeah, and the thing is with the Dyer films, I think Bruce Willis said that each film gets into a bigger scheme. Like the first one was in a building, the second one was in an airport, the third one was in New York, the fourth one was like the whole America, the fifth one was in like in Europe, and there's a sixth one coming out, and he's hoping that'll be set in space. Something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he, yeah. He, said, he said he wanted we wanted to do six Die Hard films. He said the fifth one should be outside America. Yeah, so Russia, yeah. which which to me is like, really Russia? Yeah, I Haven't guess. Done, ha, don't we have enough 
the media focusing on them as the bad guys. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. I hear you die hard. <laughs> and also, I'd like to pick up on one one little thing about sequels, which is annoying in some cases, but infuriating for many is the numbering or just disregarding the numbers. Like the Halloween series went always one through five, then it was it was Halloween. Rina, the curse of Michael Myers, how Halloween H two O Resurrection, Die Hard, but Die Hard, Die Hard Two, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Uh, it, got, it was literally Die Hard, but in Europe it's called Die Hard Four Point Oh. Yeah. Just going, going with the theme of the actual um, sci- sci-fi thing. Then a good day to Die Hard. Yeah. And you got Fast and Furious, which does exactly the same thing. The oh, Fast yeah, yeah, it does. Now, that's a confusing franchise, because uh, you got the first one, the second one, and then... The, the, Fast, the Fast and the Furious, Too Fast, Too Furious, okay, it's cheesy, play on words, fair yep. enough. The Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift, which is the third one, I mean, you would think it was a spin-off, but it isn't. No, then you got yeah. Fast and Furious, which is the fourth title, and you think, why is it called Fast and Furious 4? Then we had Fast and Furious 5. And now we're going to, going to get a Fast and Furious 6. Yeah. Let it so die, what, man. What, what, happened but, to, what happened to the third and fourth numberings? But here's the thing with this franchise. The fourth film is set before Tokyo Drift. And you got a fifth film which ties every character together, yep. apparently. Yep, everyone comes back from all the films. And one thing about the franchise which... Really, it was really odd ever since the second one is that it's no longer a film about feuds between race car drivers on the street streets. It's now a series of heists with fast cars. Yeah, I noticed that too. And well, they sort of tie in the racing a little bit, but not. It's not the main focus. It's about getting as much money as you can while driving around the sports car with a lot of TNA. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to bring up... uh, Hmm? And you have Twilight and Harry Potter series where they make that last book two films. Harry Potter didn't need two films for that last book. They could have done that part one in the first five, ten fucking minutes of that last film. Nothing happened! You know what, what, I I can tell you, I know one film that, or Harry Potter film, that could have been split into two parts, and that's that's the um, Goblet of Fire. You seen the size of that book? At that point, they were really getting. Yeah, that was the biggest one in the series, but they still they still managed to somehow it, condense it. it. You condensed it shorter than the third film. Mm-hmm. And the final book in the series, uh, the Deathly Hallows, is is one of the shortest books in the series. The but, shortest uh, one is definitely the, the first one. It's like the the Deathly Hallows. Uh, is probably the fourth shortest book, and yet uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna argue that um, that they that they probably didn't m- need to make it or expanded it into two movies, but we both we all know why they did that. Funny. They they did that to to prolong the series, one more film. As, uh, as Twilight, although um and. Twilight and, and Harry Potter were the first. Um, say, Twilight and Harry finishing Potter, my train of I, I, thought I, I, here. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, yet there were some things in, in uh, the final Harry Potter film that needed expanding upon. Because in the book, uh, the, the final confrontation between uh, Voldemort and Harry was unusually short and lacking compared to a lot of their previous climaxes. I mean, this is yeah, the big this of... is the big deal, so it needs to be at uh, the movie came along and said, "Okay, this is the big deal. It it needs to be overblown and it needs to be it needs to be crazy a little bit and 3D." And it was and 3D. <laughs> yes. Uh and so that was something that I think needed ex- needed expanding. Uh, yeah, so and now you may... 
continue, Dan. I was going to say that um, Twilight and Harry Potter are are exactly the first films to do the split um, sequel thing. Like Kill Bill, for example, was shot as one whole movie, as was Back to the Future Part 2, which was called Back to the Future Paradox. Oh, so they they weren't just filming those two movies at the same time. They were actually considering putting them together. Yeah, that's why you had it in the Back to the Future Part 2. That's why you had the trailer for the third film. And Kill Bill, Kill Bill Bones 1 and 2 were exactly one whole movie, but it was split into two. Ah. That's interesting. Never... And they had plans yeah. to... And they had... They didn't let you in on this, but they had plans to split it into two movies long before they announced that it was going to be split. Mm. Uh, into two. But I'll look. Oh, well. But, uh, since Harry Potter and Twilight did the two par- two part thing with the movies, uh, Hunger Games is going to do it. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. And, and, and uh, Hobbit is going to be uh, three, three parts long because they're splitting the um, final part the final part into its own movie, apparently. Ah. That's what I've I heard. guess Smog is just that popular. <laughs> now, I've got, I got two ideas we can move this conversation, this podcast over. We can go to unnecessary sequels or pre the Star Wars prequels. Uh, I would prefer the unnecessary sequels. Oh, I know where yeah, to start I, off I, with. I'm looking at my I shelf and looking at I'm looking at the DVD, the mask, and all of a sudden I'm thinking the son of the mask. Oh God, that is. Do we really need that? No, and we DVD. do not need that. And the thing is, there was a mask too in the planning at the back in the day, but I don't know what happened with the production of it. Because in Nintendo Power magazine, there was a contest yeah. to be, be in the film of Max Two. And that I never think it's happened. Of, I think it's because of the license, because the mask is essentially a comic book character. And uh, I don't know if um, uh, Touchstone actually still had the license at the time. I could have been, yeah. But Son of Mask? Oh, oh my Kombat. god, really? Mortal Kombat 2 didn't I, need to happen. I have a good story to tell. Go um, for it. Uh, this is a different kind of, of film. And this is a the story of a, a sequel that got canned. Um, how many people here have seen uh, The Graduate? I have. No. It's been a really long time, but I have. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you guys are familiar with the story, then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the story, it's a story of Dustin Hoffman playing a guy who uh, just graduated college and has an affair with uh, an older woman who... His girlfriend's uh, mother. His girlfriend's mother. Ooh. And uh, in, the, in the end, uh, what winds up getting in trouble with... Uh, uh, with everybody, obviously, but uh, the repercussion is uh, his girlfriend's about to marry another another guy, and he uh, runs in uh, totally and in a totally uh, romantic movie uh, last minute save. Uh, she decides to not marry the guy that she's marrying, and then runs off with Dustin Hoffman instead because. They need a happy ending, and uh, it was it was a good movie, but um, uh, there were talks of a sequel. Twenty years later, did they make one? There was going to be a graduate too. Oh, that's what they did do it. They did do it. It was with Michael Cost, uh, Kevin Costner, and and Shirley MacLaine, I think, was in it. They repl- uh, They uh, well. They didn't do the one that was uh, uh, being talked about by. Um, they didn't do the one that was being talked about by Dustin Hoffman. Uh, Hoffman had proposed a sequel in which uh, he uh, he's uh, he's uh, married his uh, his girlfriend. They have a kid, 
and the kid uh, comes home from college with uh, his new with his new girlfriend and the the twist is that Dustin Hoffman starts having an affair with his son's girlfriend so wow. now it's it's uh it's Dustin Hoffman playing the part of Mrs. Robinson. That idea got canned. Yeah. Wow. And I'm not surprised it got canned. Mm-hmm. And uh, so there, uh, while we're talking about uh, all these, all these ideas of of sequels that didn't need to happen. We can think back and remember at least there were some sequels that didn't happen. Exactly. Yeah. Actually, mm-hmm. a sequel I kind of want because I don't read. Um, the Golden Compass, That I heard that bombed, and that's why they were going to do a series of films for it, but because it bombed so bad, they, they, they're they not going to continue it. And because it ended not on a cliffhanger, but you know, open to see what's going to happen next. I want to know what happens next. I want my second Golden Compass movie. And I didn't think it was that bad. Some things confused me. Maybe it didn't make sense. But I didn't think the film was horrible. I was entertained. And isn't that the overall point of a film? That's why I'm not so hard as some of the other critics. I don't always give a crap about character development or this, this, and this. I just want to be entertained and have a have a good time. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'm trying to look, look on my shelf for unnecessary sequels or sequels that I know about that movies I own. Uh, I'm looking at the Chronicles of Riddick. Oh. Uh, yeah. That pitch Black I mean, probably. Pitch, really Bla- P- pitch Black was a good film, but they decided to make a sequel on the character and just kill all the other characters that are related to Pitch Black. And uh, some, anime, some anime director wanted to make an interquill called Dark Fury. And there's talks yep. of a new Riddick film just called Riddick. Mm. Oh, and by the way, for the record, there is no Graduate 2. Not even a spin-off or anything. I could have swore there was something. See, now I have to okay, look it up because well... this is going to bug me. I could have swore there was something with Kevin Costner playing the Dustin Hoffman character. And it's his kid or somebody's kid, and she finds out about the affair that happened with the graduate. And I want to say there's Jennifer Aniston. Uh, there's one th- sequel that I talk about, but it's kind of, I don't know whether it's a sequel or not, and that's Evil Dead 2. Oh, yeah, Evil Dead 2. That's, they sort of call it as like a, a remake to the first film, per se. A red yeah, it's, it's, got, it's got the two characters. Yeah. Two, two of the main characters from the first film, but it's, it's, it's got a bigger budget. You got all a bunch of really dark humor and mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of continuity errors because there's one scene where a woman gets completely covered in blood, and next scene she's completely normal. <laughs> you know, like you do. Yeah. You, yeah. It just it's, 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 it is a great film. Don't get me wrong, but it, it's just hard to tell. It's, I've seen the first one. The first one brilliant yeah and the most and the scene that everyone comes to mind is the tree rape mm-hmm. which you think which it which the sequel does almost you know it's going to do a tree rape scene but i'm saying it just gets dragged off and smashed against a tree mm. but then we had the third film just called army of darkness with yeah. two endings my, my yeah turn. with the alternative editing yeah i'm a huge fan of army of darkness and and it's like one of my favorite quoted films. I quote that film in my life. I mean, it's amazing. And then with the alternate ending, I mean, it's supposed to, spoiler alert, uh, apparently Ash gets sent into the apocalyptic future. Yes. There it goes. Yeah, you get sent to apocalyptic future because you see him put in. Uh, four drop. I think it's you put in five drops or three drops. Can't remember. And you can see him ac- accidentally getting an extra drop drop into his mouth. But um, I didn't know there was an alternate ending. I looked at the back of the TV. I thought it's an alternate ending, and I watched it. I thought it's kind of lousy and last minute. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. much like mm-hmm. Shop of Horrors was. Found the Graduate sequel, ish. Ish. It's, uh, ish. Rumor has it. Well, it, it's rumor has it. I was right. It has uh, Jennifer Aniston, Kevin Costner, and uh, Shirley MacLaine in it. And it's let's see, a screenplay by Ted Griffin, and derives from a real life rumor about the family in the 1963 novel *The Graduate* by Charles Webb. Okay. So that's what became of *The Graduate* too. Oh my God! This girl almost has my name. The character's name is Sarah Huttinger. She's two letters away from my name. Wow, that's <laughs> actually kind of creepy. And weird. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting you mentioned Evil Dead because they've just announced something really crazy. Mm. Um, Over the uh, remake? Along with, along with the, uh, the Evil Dead remake, it looks like Sam Raimi is uh, still is uh, going to be uh, writing Evil Dead Four. So Ooh. Uh, Bruce Campbell, Bruce Campbell, so, Bruce Campbell, Bruce Campbell. So you've got uh, so you've got uh, a remake planned and a sequel to the original series. Confused? Good. If they're gonna, yes. if they're gonna call it Evil Dead something, they're gonna call it Evil Dead something something something. Because Army of Darkness. It's kind of like how the. It. I'll, I'll just uh, fuck with everyone. Just call it Army of Darkness Two. Ashy's back. Uh, how about uh, or, or how about uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two, uh, that's being that's being released soon is actually pretending like the sequels to the original film never happened. Oh, you mean um, the recent Teen Chainsaw Massacre? It was a continuation of the first film, yeah. It was, it, yes. Wasn't there was, was recently, a, recently a somewhat remake sequel called Texas Chainsaw? That's the, one we're ta- that's the one we're talking about. That's the one that's directly a sequel to the first film. Didn't they only mm-hmm. do that? Yeah, they've done that already with the... They've done a sequel to the original, but apparently this new one is a direct sequel to the first one. Or is it a direct sequel to the remake? No, no, it's a direct sequel to the original. How many fucking Chainsaw movies are there? <laughs> there's a lot. I but... swear, I, I, swear <laughs> it's like, I know there's, there's one, two, and three. I know there's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, the be- a beginning, and there was a remake... Then is the Exorcist. And then there was a prequel to the remake. Oh, yeah. This is why. This is why. This is why I don't watch, watch horror movies. Apart from the fact that I just don't like horror movies, but it just gets so confusing. You think is this the original? Is this the original? Is it? What's, is this? A, is this the original? Because this one says it's original as well, but it's got a different cover. Yeah, because why haven't they <laughs> done Freddy vs. Jason two yet? That ended with oh, a that was cliffhanger. Hilarious. Hollywood is very particular when it comes to sequels. Apparently. <sighs> and, and, sequel, and here is... And, and sequel, I was going to say, there's been a sequel you don't know about because uh, I'm going to say like, I'm going to say one of these films which, you, which is directed by um, Paul W.S. Anderson of Resident Evil fame. But it's one film he did I actually really like and that's Death Race with Jason Statham. And... Mm-hmm. I recently found out there's a Death Race 2 with exactly the same plot. And there's the Death Race 3 as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting franchise because, De- I mean, Death Race has the Jason Statham and then the rest of them don't even have Jason Statham in it. And Death Race was essentially a remake of Death Race 2000. Yeah, exactly. Had, I was just going to say was, that. Which had yep. David Carradine and Sylvester Stallone. Yep. And to mess with your minds even more, I I, uh, I always kind of thought that, uh, you know, when I, I watched the Jason Statham Death Race, and I did enjoy it, surprisingly, uh, I, I couldn't help but thinking all throughout the film, uh, so this is what happened to that Super Mario Kart movie idea. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> no, there's that other there's that other game um, with Sweet Tooth. What's that one called again? Twisted Metal. Yeah, they're, they're, they made basically a Twisted Metal movie. I don't know. To me, I can think I can think of two other games which it's like, and that's Jack X Combat Racing and Wipeout. Mainly because of the driving over the um, plates to get weapons. Mm. What about like uh, the transporter sequels or Mission Impossible? Milk, milk. I have milk. I have all three. I have all three Transporter movies. I think the Transporter Two is probably the only good sequel. Maybe because he has a one hilarious um, scene where he takes out like ten folks with a with a horse pipe. That's Mission Impossible. Uh, I've only seen Impossible uh, Three, only because it had Sam and Peg in it. I have, not seen God's Protocol. I have not seen Ghost Pro- Protocol. It's on the shelf downstairs. I have not seen it. It. I see. Ghost Protocol is actually pretty good. Yeah, no, it wasn't too bad at all. What about the Matrix sequels? I hear people say, say Kick-Ass is good. I haven't watched that yet. Yeah, that's going to get a sequel. Thank yeah, you. that's coming out with a sequel. Yeah. But Jim Carrey as Captain Stars want... and Stripes. <laughs> You want to know how how some sequels get made, guys? How? I'll uh, I'll clue you in I, I, by this uh, by this particular article that I'm looking at right now. Uh, uh, Planes, the uh, the spinoff movie of the Cars series. Uh, oh, it says right. here. Yes, yeah, Planes trilogy can. Confirmed. Criers recasting discussed. Voice ass. Voice actor. Voice ass. Uh, <laughs> voice actor Carlos Alazraki tells the comedy film nerds about voicing El Chupacabra in the Planes trilogy, confirming that Disney is already planning two follow ups to this summer's car spin off. The first sequel, Planes 2 Fire and Rescue, was teased, teased last June. This is how sequels get made. They, some sequels get made. They are not uh, a genuine artistic choice. They are a business choice. Yeah, that's actually a given. And, 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 this doesn't really surprise me, really, because every new franchise gets planned as a trilogy. For yeah. example, and I hate to bring it up because I know how much I hate this. I know how much Sarah hates it. Dragon Ball Evolution was planned as a trilogy. Until the ratings came back and it completely fucked it over, and I can't. Oh. Mm. You have no idea. You have no idea how many times I had to pause the film and scream <laughs> at the TV, saying, "No, you got it wrong." So much. When the dragon showed up, my brother. Up. When my brother and I were watching it, when the dragon showed up whose name I can never remember, my brother goes, is Shemron. this the dragon that takes us to Shemron? It was like this little six foot long dragon. The, the damn Dragon Ball dragon is like this endless thing. Mm-hmm. How do you fuck that up? I know it's planned as a trilogy. I we could have got a Dragon Ball Z out of it and had Krillin and Gohan in it, but yeah, a lot of films get planned as trilogies. It's just, uh, not not always they get go through with it. Oh, what's worse is when there what's worse go. again if leave on a fucking cliffhanger. Cast two sucked. Why the hell are you make a spin off from it? I know they could have. Well, I haven't seen Cars two, so actually I can't say that. But the thing I'm agreeing about is that they have so many other amazing films that they could have done a sequel to. Like a lot of people would have loved to have seen a sequel to the. Uh, the Incredibles. Incredibles. You know, of course they fall. That's happening. I look, I, that is, that's... I would love to see, see a sequel to A Bug's Life. I like A Bug's Life. Yeah, we, Incredibles <laughs> 2 is happening. A Bug's Life doesn't need Good. a sequel. Finding Nemo 2 is happening. Yeah, we, we kind of had this discussion about those Pixar films getting the sequels in the last episode. I mean, Finding Nemo 2 see, is happening. Nemo doesn't need a sequel either. The, uh, yeah, I know, but they're making it, apparently. It ended fine. 
Have so you, did um. Have you talked? Have, 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 have you talked? I was just gonna say, have you talked about the directed video Disney sequels? No, because the last episode was just Pixar films, not directed Disney films at all. But they those, but, of them. Yeah, but, like, but those like directed D- Disney sequels are just pointless. Like, for example, Bambi Two. Like, that's a big time gap for a sequel. Um, I, I, okay, now you're just toying with me. <laughs> now you're toying with me, Mike. <laughs> I know you're toying with me. I did an entire episode on this. Exactly. Uh, well, uh, there are some Disney sequels, and you got to look. You got to look at me strangely for this, but I did watch Cinderella two. Maybe because I was about I, I don't know how old I was when it came down. Oh, my mom worked worked at a video rental store. It was there. It was a cartoon. Besides, Cinderella's a good film anyway. Uh, and mm-hmm. the, you get honestly the vibe you get from it saying this. Was used to be a, this was going to be a TV show, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, the most sequels I feel that tend at TV shows are you just think it is trying, they're just ringing out money anyway. Like Lady and Trout Two was pointless, even though it was kind of cute with the puppies. And you got Tarzan and Jane, which was a spin-off. Then you got Tarzan Two, which had um, oh, what was his name again? It was in the. Ah, oh, damn it, Ellie George Joel Carlin. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's, it's, but majority of the Disney sequels does have no pop. Even as failed TV shows, or does oh kids like to they'll buy anything. Yeah, exactly. How about 101 Dalmatians yep. 2? Do you mean the, the live-action remake sequel or the or the animated movie sequel? Because that's all confusing enough. <laughs> no, there's a, di- there's, a different, there's a difference to that one. The uh, la- the cartoon one is called 101 Dalmatians 2. The live-action is called 102 Dalmatians because I thought it was clever. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, and, and, man. And that's, not, that's, not the, that's not the only film series... Well, we can call it a series that actually um, does continue that certain kind of nu- numeracy, like Ocean's Eleven. Then you got Ocean's Twelve and Ocean's Thirteen. Yeah, those the... are good though. I I have no complaints. Those with those, those, really. those, those those are good films. It's just the, the nu- numeracy yeah, it's just, again. It's just nitpicking, really. Just yeah, there's a lot of films that use the numerals in their titles. Uh. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking about another unnecessary sequel, per se, and since uh, Son of Mask came out, there was another Ace Ventura franchise that had a sequel, and you might know where I'm going. <laughs> no, 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 Ventura Jr. I yep. actually have fucking seen that, and I just, I need to go cry in a corner now. Yeah. Because you've reminded me that I've seen it. I hate you, Mike. That's what I'm here, to make people hate me. Lose friends. It's Ventura. But, it's but, Ventura. Yeah. Fucking good film. It's Ventura 2. Not as good, but fucking good film. Yeah. It's Ventura Jr. It's a Disney movie. How the fuck did Disney get the license to Ace Ventura? How? When? Why? Uh, when they Let's did... go for stuff. No. Uh... I scratch that they didn't need to. They didn't need to. <laughs> and uh, and when nature calls, I saw that one first, so I actually I actually enjoyed that more than even the first Ace Ventura. But God, Ace Ventura too. Ace Ventura Junior. You killed off Jim Carrey. No, 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 no. They didn't kill him. They didn't kill him. Here's what they they say that it he's was... an abandoning father. It was established that he disappeared somewhere in the Bermuda Triangle. He's dead. In a oh, year. well, that's convenient then. Roll on the footage for more, for more sequels, Disney, because you don't know when to quit. I don't think... Actually, been... they did when John Lasseter came in. I don't think Ace Ventura Jr. was a Disney film. That was like... It was distributed yeah. by Morgan... Creek production. No, 
I'm I'm pretty sure it was Disney. Because I remember seeing like it was a telefilm that was on Cartoon Network. I was remember seeing it. It wasn't Disney. But anyway, I think, I think with we wrap I, I think with that. With no, with me mentioning that one movie that is gonna make us all cry at night and wanting our mommy, I'm gonna end this episode. There might be, just so you know, we're not done with sequels. There might be a part two in the future, but right now I think it's time to end it. Which may touch upon Star Wars. Yes, touch upon the Star Wars films. Well, mostly the episode one. Mostly episode two. Uh, you didn't end it on a good note, could you? No. No. No, you had to end it on that, you uh, bastard. You're welcome. I expect your <laughs> pitchforks and pitches. <laughs> With that, this has been Simon Royale. I'm your host, Mike. And Wait, your with... dartboard. Yeah, I'm getting ready to... Normally at the end of the video, you'll uh, hear me attempt to get a target on my board to get a next topic for the uh, next episode. So just let me throw the darts. Oh, this is interesting. What? Films considered the best. Which means that as I was researching topics, Wikipedia has a list of Considered films that are the best. And I have a few on top of my head already. I already mentioned three of them already. Exactly. Uh, with that, uh, thanks for listening. Is nothing ever going to keep them down? I don't know. Nobody laughed at that? Fuck you guys. <laughs> I'm smiling. <laughs> yeah. Okay, smiling help. Just uh, if you want to request a topic for me to put on the dartboard, you can do that by putting in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more Cinema Royale. See ya. Ciao for now. Goodbye. Adios. Hey, everybody, throw up your horns.